village online tassel eject Uh, basically, I'm, I'm going to run it in this mode. Let me see. I might just be able to get something a little bit bigger here. Let's see if I move this out of the way and go over here to view. There was another way I can get. I don't want to. Be, oh, maybe at 100 percent. Yeah, that should do it. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to present in this mode because I want to I, I want these tabs at the top of my screen. So um, this is the presentation you're in. I guess everyone's got that who needs it. There's also written on the board over here, there's the tiny URL for these slides. So if, you, if you're in the slides, you can follow along and you can, uh, you can see what a rich resource it is. So basically, we're in a presentation called Thinking Small, a case for social media assisted language learning. And uh, I gave this presentation at uh, TESOL conference. I, I, not this presentation exactly. I gave a version of it at the TESOL conference in uh, Atlanta, and it was recorded there. Um, it was part of a, uh, an academic session for the Cal Interest section, and there's a link at the bottom of this slide. All these links are hyperlinked, so when you get this presentation on your smartphone or your device, Go to all the links. You'll have all. This. It's about. He, he mentioned I was uh, a host of something called Learning Together. I'm giving my affiliation these days. It's over to my smartphone. Just to. I might just do that. Let me see if this makes any difference. Well, okay. You know, things are coming gradually. All right. So anyway, Learning Together is a, a podcast I run. If you go to About Learning Together, you can see more about my podcast. Uh, this is the Cal Academic Session. We recorded the Cal Academic Session. We streamed from TESOL. We do that for a number of sessions at the TESOL conferences. So uh, my presentation is uh, this one. It's cued to my presentation. So if you want to see that uh, at uh, TESOL, I presented on some research, a survey that I did uh, on uh, people's attitudes, teachers' attitudes toward Cal and vis-a-vis -vis that of their students. So that was the focus of that one. This one, I, I promised in my abstract that I was going to talk about research relating to, um, to students. So again, you have, all these, uh, you have all these links. This morning before I caught a grab out here, I tweeted that uh, to anybody in particular that could join us in Zoom, this is being broadcast in Zoom right now, it's being recorded. There's nobody online, but it's a one-way recording right now. But someone might pop in, you never know. And um, I, I pointed them to learning together. That's the, the uh, this is where I organize events in learning together. It's learningtogether.pbworks.com. That link is in the slides as well. So this is April 19th. This is what we're doing today, uh, giving this presentation. Uh, and so in my tweet, I told people to go there and they could see all the information about if they want to join us, they can. This is all, as you recognize, social media, social media connecting teachers. The purpose being to get teachers used to social media and used to the affordances so that you can then use this with your students. So, uh, and, and my slides are there. There's the tiny URL. So anybody can join us and do that. And then last night, as I was kind of getting all the tabs queued up. I thought, well, you know, why don't I just rehearse this, you know, and record it in Zoom. I mean, it's so easy, you know, so I did. I recorded it in Zoom, so it, anything can happen today. Uh, but you can go and see the recording I did last night, which, by the way, took 45 minutes. Uh, so there's a lot, because I, I think I thought I would have an hour for this presentation, uh, and then I realized it was only 30 minutes. It doesn't matter, uh, but at least there's, there's a full, almost one hour recording. So if we have to leave some things out, you can, uh, you can go there. This is, and, and of course, it's, all the links are in the slide presentation that you can get at that tiny URL. So I'm going to do four things. Deborah said I should do two things, but anyway, there were four promised in the abstract. 
So uh, first of all, I'm going to show you an example from two days ago in this conference uh, uh, of an example, a good example of social media used with students to start out with that. Then I'm going to develop the case for small that I've been making for the last 10 years. I'm going to just show you that. I'm going to get quickly, I hope, into how teachers can form communities of practice and uh, learn from one another how to use social media, become familiar with social media. And then uh, some examples of how this uh, rubs it off on uh, students. So this brings us almost to the task. The first thing is a practical example of uh, how social media enables students uh, to become creative. So if you have a Twitter feed, you could search for GWH Narrative 7. 7 is the better one. Did it, was anybody at that presentation? Okay. Uh, this was uh, a presentation by, uh, let, me, let me name that feed. Here it is here. Okay. If you search on it, this is what you'll find. Okay. So searching on that tag, the tag is GWH Narrative uh, gave a presentation about how they're using Twitter to get their students to write what they call multimodal sequential narratives. And so basically having their students compose some small, something small in Twitter and then follow it up with a picture and tag it in Twitter with this tag so that the tag, all, the, all of them come up together. So this, what the students are doing uh, for example, here is uh, Venkat. He he wrote, uh, "When I get to my when I got to the theater, my friend was drenched with sweat from his head to his toes. And slowly, he unzipped his jacket, and inside he had a bomb, and the bomb exploded." So that's uh, that was his little narrative. And then uh, another guy he went to a movie with his friend, and um, something happened in the theater. It exploded, and uh, Finally, he could go home and rest, but when he got to the door, he said, I realized this day wouldn't be so good. So anyway, these are the these are the kinds of things that his students were doing. And so this is an obvious, really good example of social media, engaging students with social media. So I took a picture of Vivek giving this presentation, and I posted it to Twitter. And uh, he, he came on and thanked me for it. Let's see. He... He posted a tweet. Gosh, thanks for the, thanks for the tweet. Good that you like the project. You know, so um, he didn't tag it though. He didn't give it his tag. Otherwise, it would have shown up in the feed. But but basically, um, so I the reason I tweeted it on his tag was that so it would aggregate with the content of his students. So his students will see it when they go to visit their. They'll, they'll see what their teacher is doing. Their teacher showed this. So, you know, it's a, a nice positive way of uh, using social media all around. And so it starts with the teachers using social media, and then it, it uh, trickles down to the students. Okay, assisted language learning. Uh, the, the plenary this morning, Alan, uh, was talking about the normalizing computers being normalized. In 2003, Stephen Bax was writing a lot about uh, how the computers were so normalized that CAL, the acronym CAL, Computer Assisted Language Learning, was not um, possibly losing its relevance. So let me just adjust my screen size here. Okay, yeah, get that on the screen. All right, so um, other people in realizing this uh, have invented things like technology assisted language learning, technology enhanced language learning, mobile assisted language learning, uh, Jonathan talked about mobile assisted vocabulary learning, things like that. So uh, in 2005, Mike Levy and Phil Hubbard wrote something that if you have the slides and click on it, you'll bring up this link in ResearchGate. Here's their article right here. Why call, call, call. <laughs> anyway, uh, it looks like it might take a little time under this connection, but it's not that important that we see it. If you go down to the bottom of the page, uh, they, what they do, they argue that 
there's no point in throwing out the baby with the bathwater. CAL is a very useful acronym. It's got traction. People know what it is. Nothing really that we need to change, except at the bottom of the first page, uh, CAL may not ultimately make the transition. This is in 2005, right? They said it may not make the transition from uh, pre-network to network-based teaching and learning. And they got that idea from something Carol Chappelle had written. So they anticipated that we, where we are now, we're in an era of social media assisted language learning. So if you kind of halfway agree with Bax that we're not really should be what computers do. And what they really do is they put students together and help them to communicate. Language, in my view, is communication. I know it has to be systematized, but um, still, I think communication is the main thing. That's the whole Learn language helps you communicate with other people. So uh, in 2009, the Computer Assisted Language Learning Intersection at PSOL uh, had its 25th anniversary, 25 years of founding, and, and in Denver, we had a little celebration of that. And I gave a presentation at the um, uh, at the uh, session we had on that, and this was my eighth slide, and that was the uh, the first time that I put out in writing what I'd probably muted uh, mooted to other people uh, that social networking is the new front line, and that's where I I, I, thought, I encourage people there to think small. So we're going from 25 years of computer assisted language learning intersection to Thinking small. Uh, let me just go down my slides. By the way, Kelly, there's a tiny URL on the wall there. If you want to go to that, in your you can catch up with the slides here. So, uh, I this, it, I wrote an article in 2014. It's this one. Let's see if it will come up. Okay, it's a little bit faster. All right, this article in 2014 was a book chapter on connectivist learning. Uh, and I, oh, well, it's actually there, at the top of that page, there was a, a link to the bottom part. At the bottom part is where I had documented uh, what I've been doing and uh, talking about small, some of the things I've been talking about uh, for social media assisted language learning. And I, here's a slide that shows a few of them. So in 2009, I was, um, in 2010 in particular, I started writing more about it. And uh, if you go to Google Scholar, I, I just got curious, well, who, is, who has been using social media assisted language learning? So if you search in Google Scholar, you can filter search results in, in Google Scholar. Here's a Google search for social media assisted language learning in quotes, because otherwise you get social and media and language and learning. So just to see who's using that. Uh, if you go back to 2009, you don't get any hits. Okay, no hits in 2009. If you go to 2010, let's see who's been using computer assisted language learning according to Google Scholar. It may be a limited search in any event. Uh, somebody, I, I wrote a paper and I, somebody picked it up. In fact, I didn't even know they had published this paper, but I found it in Google Scholar. Uh, something I wrote, and I, I was in South America at the time, and so I, I, they published it in something called Puertas Abiertas. And anyway, so that's the first mention of social media in Google Scholar. If we go up to 2011, we get an additional hit. Uh, somebody named Karen Bashinter um, used the term but credited me in a presentation I did with Bill Cousins, who's living here in Penang, by the way, and Jim Buckingham. Uh, so anyway, basically, if you go if you keep going up to the, it, so what I'm trying to say is that the term uh, has not, was not uh, in the media and until, except other people, this doesn't mean that people weren't using it. There's Chua Key Man. I don't know if anybody knows Chua Key Man on, in Sarawak. He's at the University of Malaysia in Sarawak. He, uh, in the Thai TESOL conference in 2013, he made a presentation called Thinking Big on Small, Social Media Assisted Language Learning. I came upon this presentation and I got in touch with him and uh, he's independently had this idea. Uh, you can find out more about 
his presentation in the next slide. Uh, you can see he was using Twitter and YouTube and Facebook to test for learning advantages, learning benefits for his students. Um, the, the, all those links just go to, to his slides. There's really not much information about that. I am in touch with him on LinkedIn. But so basically what we really wanted to talk about is how teachers can model uh, can model to each other their use of social media and using it with each other experientially and how that can rub off on students. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the community of communities of practice I've been involved in. In 1998, uh, I got something going. I actually started it a little earlier than that, but in 1998, it became a, kind of a movement. This is called Writing for Webheads, and this was its portal page. There's a, that link is hot. Goes to you can go see the what the students were writing still, and uh, this was. Uh, uh, writing for Webheads was a website I kept and the students sent me pictures and they sent me writings and we basically talked with each other. We, we used an avatar based uh, site called the Palace to get together and meet frequently. And we also had a, uh, a plugin, a VOIP plugin, voice over internet protocol plugin called Hear Me, which we put on our website so we could all get together and talk, which back in that, at that time, the turn of the century was pretty novel to say the least. We attracted a lot of teachers. So a lot of teachers kind of joined this student group and they started suppressing the student voices. The students dropped out. Meanwhile, something called Electronic Village Online came along and we created a uh, I, I, Village Online. If not, we should be. Uh, it's the EVO Sessions. I'll see if I can, maybe I should put the uh, link in here somewhere. But uh, it's, it happens every uh, year since 2001. The first ones were in 2001. It's a free, uh, you go to eviosessions.pbworks.com and you can, it basically starts in the middle of the year and uh, teachers propose to uh, put on courses for other teachers. This is a great social media opportunity for uh, teachers to learn things. So. Uh, the courses are from January, January and February, run for five weeks. Um, they've been going on for all this time, but my, my session, in Webheads in Action, was in 2002. And if you want to know more about Webheads in Action, you can check the encyclopedia. There's an a TESOL Encyclopedia of English Language Teaching. And I, some, they were looking for someone to write the article on Webheads, so for some reason they asked me. So anyway, uh, this um, the article is here. If you want to read it, you can read it by clicking that link. They didn't restrict its use for, uh, for the authors to put it on their websites. And so this is a slide that kind of shows us uh, a little bit about what uh, Electronic Village Online. This this slide I'm going to put some links into. So by the time you hit it, maybe by tomorrow, I'll I'll put the links in where you can say EVO began. You can go to the link for EVO, you can learn more about that. Um, but I've been doing a lot of EVO courses, multi-literacies, most recently Minecraft MOOC, uh, so uh, trying to get uh, help teachers to work with each other. And these is an action which started 18 years ago. Oh, there we go, 18 years ago, uh, still has activity. A uh, teacher named Anasora was wondering recently, uh, she couldn't remember where to get free images online. And so she wrote the group and asked, and in eight, uh, six days she got eight replies with 56 link suggestions. And significantly, she wrote us back, dear Teresa, Fernanda, Mary, and Vance, what a wealth of suggestions to look through. Thank you so much. You're my memory and my crowdsource. Hugs, Anasora. So, there's, the important thing is here that uh, people relate to each other, they care about each other. So uh, hugs is kind of a, a pretty normal thing. You don't get that much at conferences, but uh, here in, in communities of practice, you certainly do. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm gonna start skipping a little bit down to get to the last 
part of what I want to talk about. But basically, I wrote a chat that that book chapter that I showed you earlier, where I jumped down to the bottom of the document, social media assisted language learning. Uh, this is a chapter you can actually read it in in, uh, in a PDF format. I'm asserting that teachers working in connected frameworks uh, will apply similar strategies that they're learning through uh, through their experience in their classes. And certainly, this happened with me over the years, but then I've been doing it for 20 years. But still, that's that's the way I feel that I learn. So, though, for the uh, TESOL conference in Atlanta, I did a survey about how teachers felt about social media. You can read about that if you want with the search results here, or with the, the survey results at that link, but I'm not going to talk about it here. What I'm going to try to do is uh, the last thing in bold, the fourth thing I promised in my abstract, which was to uh, give examples of some research I've done just uh, on students in my classrooms and show you how social media gets absorbed, uh, you know, becomes a, a part of your classrooms. So me, when I, when I run a class, I always set up a wiki for the class. And I have the students, the students all know to go to that wiki and to find all their links that they can use for the assignments I give on a day-to-day -day basis and things like that. So a wiki itself is a first, uh, a first step to socialize your classroom. Uh, I also use Google Docs a lot. Um, this part of the presentation is going to branch now out to other uh, things I've done, other presentations I've made. So recently, I made a virtual presentation at, to Sultan Qaboos University in Oman. I used to work there, but uh, the, some faculty there asked me to make a presentation uh, about um, I, let me just find it here. It'll be the easiest thing. Uh, here it is, I think. Yes, this is uh, this is a, a presentation on supporting student writing with the help of voice to text. So I use Google Docs a lot in my uh, in my writing classes, and Google Docs is can be very social. Oh, by the way, the presentation is recorded here. There's a link here to a, a video that shows a little bit about what Google Docs does for students. I just queued it up here. Let's see if it's still queued. Looks good. Okay. There we go. It's probably playing. All right. Oh, oh. yes. That's going to make it bigger. I'll make it bigger. Okay. This, this uh, shows a, this is a, uh, a screencast, a, a screen, not just a screen, well, you know, a, a, a video screencast of a student who's, I've just left his, I left him in class, I took his paper and I was up in my office marking it, and he was in another class at the time, but he decided he was bored with the physics lecture, and he came on to my, uh, my document, and I realized that we were working in real time. So I started giving, he, his cursor is the pink one there, and I started giving him feedback and he, st he was changing things as, as uh, we went. Let's see if I can just pop it up a little faster here. Okay, more feedback here. So he's coming along. This shows you, uh, I'm, I'm feeding, but this refers to situations, them. Uh, so it should be them. I think he said it or something like that. Yeah, with it. So he's, he's reading my feedback and he's going through and changing his article. So this is something, again, you don't need to sit here and watch during the precious moments we have re remaining here. Let me get out of this. Uh, so basically, at this, oh, that's the wrong one, this one, that one right there. This is where I showed the teacher some of the work I was doing with getting students in uh, using Google Docs, and not only Google Docs, but the voice in Google Docs. Let me, I'll just show you very briefly. Uh, I think it's this presentation shows that this is a little bit better. Okay, let me just put that in presentation mode. There we go. Okay, so what I'm doing, these are very low level students, very hesitant writers. So I, I started using the voice capabilities of tablets, iPads and your smartphone, 
that was what the presentation I did for the student, the teachers at Sultan Kabush University was about. Uh, I think I've gone one. So I'm getting the students to write on with me, and uh, I take the paper back to my office. I go on my iPad or my smartphone. Works best for me on iPads. Anyway, click the voice icon. I read into the I read into the icon uh, into the, the the Google Doc. I read what the student has written. This student wrote in all my life, which I is soccer, etc. So, oh, well, he, he wrote some really nice things. But anyway, let me read what I wrote. When I read it back into Google Docs, I correct the grammar. This is, I asked the, them to write 100 words. He wrote 50. The target for the essay is 250 words. So this is the first draft. So I wrote, I read into Google Docs, in all my life, uh, the extreme sport, which I love most on earth and which is most popular is soccer. When you approach the goal, you will attack anyone who gets in your way. But if it goes to the other side, you will hunt to get it. So I, I really liked what the student said, but of course he was, you know, he's finding his, his voice in a, in a very nice way. And so I printed that out and took the paper that he wrote and the corrected paper. So he's, he's halfway up there. He's, he's at 50% now. He doesn't have to go back and waddle in the mud to try to dig his way out of all his mistakes he's made so far. All he has to do is expand the paper. So I write, uh, give him some feedback there about how you can uh, continue this. And so he wrote 179 words in the next class on his iPad, uh, expanding on, on what I did. So that was just one example. Basically, that's a, about all I have time to show you today, I think, because we're sort of, the hook is sort of digging into my back there. So uh, again, uh, let me go back to the top of the show just so you'll know. If you want the slides that I just showed you with all their links, you can shoot that QR code or you can visit that tiny URL. I also uh, mentioned that I recorded this last night in rehearsal mode and it took 45 minutes to actually explain a little bit more fully. And this we're recording right now in Zoom. So what I just did is recorded. I'll put the link to the recording into this slide presentation. So you get quite a lot of information there. This is what was called flipped learning. Giving it to everyone before you come to the presentation, giving it during the presentation, and after the presentation, we're flipping again. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Hey, Vance, how much does the EBO cost? Oh. It costs us a lot of time and effort, and oh, we just we just devote our lives to it. It's very costly, but for the participants, it's free. So of course, you have to spend time to learn something, also. Yes. I'm interested with your uh, when you recorded your presentation just now. Uh huh. Right. Uh huh. So, so where, where where do you put that uh, the online presentation, and can can your students ask questions after that? If yeah. They, if they're not so sure about certain uh -huh. things. Okay. Well, I'm addressing two things. One, I'm addressing uh, teachers and students. So, uh, I work with teachers more than I do with with students. Uh, at the moment, I'm I'm not teaching, so I, uh, I don't have a teaching job. So, I'm just continuing my online work. So, I'm working with teachers to try to help them develop their skills. So. Uh, this is part of learning together. Uh, I stopped the screen share, but anyway, but basically there's nobody, there's nobody else here. I'm the only participant. Uh, but if I set this up more formally, uh, I'm just kind of doing it on the fly right now. But if I set it up more formally, then let me just get the, the screen back. Um, so this is part of learning together, which is, so this is a learning together blog. Uh, learning together .pbworks com is where I announce, where I announce all the events. Uh, at the sidebar here, there's an index of past events, which I believe is here. So these are all the 400 events we've had so far. Each one has a link. Let's see if uh, we could search on it for maybe Deborah. See, was Deborah here? Yeah. 
Healy. Okay. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Deborah Healy and Jeff Magoto. So if we wanted to pull out their recording and hear what Deborah Healy said on Learning Together one time, uh, we were talking about um, shaping the way we teach English. And anyway, it's all archived and recorded, so you can search the index, control F, and uh, that's, this will be added to. This is episode 409, what we're doing right now, on April 19th, 2019. Okay, thank, thank, you. You thank you for being a part of it. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you guys mm -hmm. for making us realize that uh, thinking small can make big impact, okay? So let's put our hand together for them. And on behalf of Kalka, I would like to extend the ah, okay. presentation. Here we go. Uh, Put this on. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh, we're also getting a photo here. If we stand here, we can have it on the, on the recording. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. There we go. Certificate. I actually did this. Yay! Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Class dismissed. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And I'll put a link in the presentation so that it will be there. Started by TESOL members, has ITEL for TESOL, it's a pretty nice uh, option. It is, it's, 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 it